Hi, welcome back to another Terranscapes video. In this video, I want to start off by welcoming all of the new viewers who may have dropped in or who dropped in recently and have stayed with the channel. Thank you so much for joining me. I get excited every time I have a new viewer, uh, every time I have a new subscriber. So hopefully you will find something here on this channel that uh, entertains or informs or inspires you. Uh, I say that every time. But it is genuine. I do mean it. I do appreciate all of you who join who join the, the the family. Who join the family? It's a Terranscapes family. Today we are going to take a look at the idol and the boss hut. Uh, but just before we get to those, it is cocktail time. Uh, today's cocktail is a highball. I don't drink highballs. I don't know. Maybe because I don't like to cut my booze. But um, I feel like it's something that I've really not explored, and I probably should be. And it's hot in the basement down here, studio, and uh, humid, and it's like the perfect time for a highball. Highballs are uh, some liquor, usually cut with club soda or maybe a ginger ale or something similar. Uh, sometimes, you know, with lemon, you know, depends on the drink. Uh, this is a stone fence highball. I saw the name and I was like, how is that not terrain? And uh, it is um, two ounces of scotch and two dashes of bitters. Uh, you dash the bitters, then pour the scotch over the ice, then top with the club soda. Well, before I talk about the glass, I have things on that. I don't know. I don't know if I'm a fan, actually. Maybe this is why I don't drink uh, highballs. It feels like watered-down scotch. I mean, it is, but that's not quite the flavor I'm usually looking for. I guess I like stronger flavors. Still, it is refreshing. I will give it that. Now, unfortunately, I am drinking this out of a Guinness pint glass, if you will, promotional Guinness. Why? Because I don't have any highball glasses. I thought I had one from a cheap set, you know, that had gotten broken over time. I couldn't even find that one. That made me unhappy. So I just went out on Amazon today and I just ordered some highball glasses and some rocks glasses because I really don't have good glasses for either. They're going to be nicer than this. So. This was inspiration to uh, up my, my glassware. But you did not drop into this channel to hear me talk about cocktails. I just do that. You are here to hear me talk about the idol and the hut. And we're going to take a look at those right after I thank viewers. Uh, one in particular, and I can't remember your name, and I didn't write it down, and I feel bad about that. So hopefully you will forgive that in the, and accept my thank you because the bits that were donated to me were um, some that I definitely did not have or could not get easily and were pieces that just struck me as like, oh, this is perfect for this. So I just want to put out a big thank you. It was a huge donation and uh, the project benefited greatly from it. So you know who you are. It was a box and it was full of shields and the sheep you're going to see. Oh yeah. And the halfling was on the tree. It's just like, this crazy assortment of awesomeness, and I, uh, I made sure I thank that person because uh, it made a big difference. So, and if you are new to the channel, especially if you're new to this project, then you should go back and take a look at the playlist in my channel. It is the Orc Display Board playlist, and it has numerous videos now. And uh, if you have questions about some of the things you see, you should check out those videos, back finger, and see if there are some answers there for you. So. Let us finally go over to the bench and we'll take a look at these models. So here is the idol and it probably would be a good starting place to talk about some of the painting that was done. Painting the yellow, I painted a lot of yellow in the past and I quickly realized that lots of very thin layers are required to get a nice smooth finish on it. So uh, that was a little bit of a learning exercise for me. Uh, doing the wood on the idol itself was a bit of a struggle to come up with a couple colors that would help break up some of the uniformity of the, the wood look. And so I, I did a little bit of variation here and there, but um, I think I would have liked a little more. So that's something I might explore in the future. I did paint the mask a little bit differently than the planks uh, that you see throughout the, the display in general because I wanted it to be a little bit brighter than the rest of the woodwork around it so it would stand out a little bit more. So I figured, you know, it, it breaks not by a lot but a little bit of the uniformity of the wood look but I thought it was the right choice 
uh, for the idol as a whole. And I should mention just a little bit about this planking. This, all of this is from the Goblin Town GW Terrain Kit. And it's a, it's a pretty solid kit if you get the double kit. The problem with it, though, the challenge, let's call it a challenge, is that all of these surfaces are just littered with these little bone fragments and whatnot all stuck into it. So for all of the surfaces you see on the entire display that are made up of these wood planks, each one has had all of those bone bits ground off and then I have either re-sculpted or through the grinding carefully shaped the wood so that the grain would be restored and you wouldn't really notice where those pieces were. If I look carefully, I can see some areas where I've ground them off. But in general, I I was like, oh, I, I don't see where I did it here or there. So I, I felt like I did a pretty good job. And a couple things that I... Uh, did since the last work in project video is um, first I added a couple uh, spots of spider webs. That was a viewer comment and I thought it was a pretty good suggestion to try to help give it a little bit more of a static pose. It you know sort of looked a little too animated and I think uh, I was concerned that it looked more like an actual monster walking across the table rather than a static idol. And so I think those helped somewhat. I probably could have added more, but at the problem was taking these bits from the Arachnorock uh, bits that I had. There aren't a lot of good chunks of web that I could pull off and stick all over the place. And in fact, finding places for these where they would you know, meet where the webs extend was uh, a, quite a challenge all on its own. And it helps to bring in a little bit of the spiders, you know, they're crawling around on it. it. Gives it a little sense that the spiders are supposed to be there or that they've been there for a while. I also um, carved out some spots for the receiving of all of the little shield bits and whatnot. Uh, when I originally was showing it, these were just sort of tacked onto the surface. So I removed some material so that these would sit down more onto the model and give it um, a little bit more of uh, in construction these were added rather than after the fact. And for the turn counter, I took a suggestion from a viewer who suggested that I use some kind of a gap material to, or at least inquired about whether the paint would rub off as the turn counter was being moved. And so I inserted a thin sheet of styrene underneath the turn counter sort of layer so that it's lifted a little bit off of the underlying layer and that way it should avoid uh, excessive paint rubbing when it's being used. And the sort of wand with the skull on top of it next to the snotling is the turn indicator. I added uh, the, you know, the snotlings around the base to kind of give it a, you know, these guys are working on it with their axes, you know, or they're uh, guarding the idol, uh, something to that effect. So here is a look at the eyes of the idol lit. And when I thought about how to pace the pulsing as I have them fading in and out, I decided to go with something pretty slow with the thought that when people walk over to look at it, at one moment they'll think they're just lit, and then the next they'll look over and they'll be off, and they'll be questioning, wait, weren't those just lit? Something a little unnerving. When I put in the light, I actually put in a bulb and then I blew that bulb and then I had to take, it, take the mask off, dig out the bulb. Luckily there was a little space in the leads and re-solder in a new bulb. And that was not a fun project, but did it and got a better uh, bulb in there that's a little bit brighter. As I wanted you to be able to see it when the, the lights are on in the room. And so this gives you a little look at what it uh, appears in the more dim light. This is not blackout, but it's pretty dim. It's pretty close to the effect you see when you're in person. Uh, so I was pretty pleased with how the uh, glow came out. Uh, it's bright enough that you can see it during um, the daylight, if you will, and uh, also really nice effect when the lights are, are really quite dim. Here we see the hut, and uh, there's so much I could talk about with the hut. I'm only going to try to cover some of the basics, uh, and if I repeat myself over the previous work in progress video, uh, which you can go see in the playlist forgive me but we'll start at the front of the hut and uh and move back from there so the walkway is more of the goblin planking which i talked about before and then i used sculpey to make the horns and i tried to model them off of 
some of the um, horns that I saw on some other, uh, like some of the orc models themselves, and try to tie them all together, you know, and tie it in with the horns that I used for the top of the roof. And I uh, did something new that I haven't done before, which is um, I freehand painted a banner. And that was uh, an interesting experience. It was a little more difficult to get started with than it probably should have, but that was because of a lack of experience. Like I, I really understand doing banners freehand now, uh, and that would be much improved uh, in the second go. But overall, how it came out with, uh, I thought it, it came out pretty well. And I actually really like the banner uh, as a piece, kind of proud of that one. And then next to the banner, um, hanging freely, is the uh, sounding horn or the call to arms horn that the uh, orc boss might grab and use uh, to summon the troops because the hut is going to sit overlooking the rest of the display board. Painting the roof was uh, a challenge. I made some extra work for myself by not keeping good records of colors uh, because all of these colors are custom mixed. And when I went back to touch up some areas, this is all airbrushed. And I learned um, a lot about airbrushing. My airbrushing skills are improving rapidly. So I was able to cut in really tightly on all of these spots uh, very effectively. But there was some touch-ups that I wanted to go back on. And then actually I changed several of the colors. So the entire roof, including the stitching, for the I would say 90% of it was painted twice. Uh, so that was... Uh, a challenge. We'll just call it a challenge and we'll move on from there. Along the base, I added these spears and I would have liked to have added more and made them a little more, you know, chaotic looking, but I really, I ran out of bits. And some of these, a couple of them are even bits that I, that I molded using Instamold. Uh, so I did a press mold of the, of a couple of the spears and made a few extra of them. But even so, I, you know, I really needed a lot of them to make the sort of jumbled look that I was kind of hoping for. And so I decided to just stick them in at some somewhat of a regular space distance from each other and just, you know, kind of roll with it from there. Uh, moving towards the back, I had saved a couple bits thinking I'd just stick them on next to the, the side of the uh, idol, of the idol, of the hut. And I really had different visions for how the back of the hut might end up. And I realized I don't have a lot of space for the back of the hut, uh, the way I designed the board. I ended up moving a lot of those elements that were going to be further away from the hut and just put them right up against the back of it. So um, adding that trophy rack, I uh, really like that. That was one of the donated bits. Uh, thank you again. Uh, that was a nice little element to add. And um, on this side, I uh, wanted to hang some of the food. I had envisioned a food rack, so I just tacked on a few things there that I thought might look like somebody could grab on their way into, uh, <laughs> into the hut. And then I wanted to have a couple snotlings be guards for the, the doorway. You know, at least they think they're guards. Uh, so those were the, the pieces that I added in and a couple more horns there as well. I had originally envisioned possibly having a, a much larger animal skull or a dragon skull or something on the back of this overhanging the entrance. And as I played with it, I just thought it's just too big. It looked out of proportion. I didn't like the ones that I had, the bits that I bought. So I ended up going with this uh, cow skull, which uh, was another donated bit. Thank you again. And this really, I thought, made a nice cap for the uh, overhang for the door. And so I was pretty pleased with that as well. The bits and bobs um, scattered around on the walls. You know, I, I added in a lot of planking um, and uh, nailed them all in. Uh, literally, they're all nailed in with pins. It was a challenge for me as a non-orc thinking modeler to try to make it look orky. And to get that uh, random sort of slap together look that they're so well known for, uh, but at the same time also, you know, try to keep myself sane assembling the walls, you know, so I didn't want to really cut up the planks and, and do a real mishmash. And also uh, sort of limited a little bit by the bits that I had. And when I say limited, I mean, I used hundreds of bits on these models. This one, uh, just a ton. Uh, but even so, I, I felt almost reluctant to overclutter it. Mm, I think if I had different kinds of bits other than shields and weapons, you know, maybe I would have found some things that I could have tacked on there. Uh, but um, nevertheless, I feel like it came out pretty well, orcified wise. Particularly, I, I think the roof came out uh, quite well, and I'm really pleased that I'm 
pleased with it because it the roof probably took as much time as the rest of the model combined, uh, probably including the lighting electronics inside. Uh, that was uh, this was a unique challenge, and we learned a lot from that. So uh, this gives you a look at how the hut came out, and um, I'm going to throw them on the board, and let's give you a look at how the lighting looks for the hut and the idol. So hopefully you enjoyed taking a look at those pieces. Some of the best, most unique work I've done to date. Uh, I've never done any sculpting before, so uh, creating the idol and the roof of the hut, which was it was a project getting that roof done, uh, start to finish. But I think it came out really well, so I'm really pleased with that. Hopefully you enjoyed seeing something a little different from me. Before we go though, I had a viewer comment, Johnny Boy one nine seven one. He had a question: Have I ever done any curved walls? He's interested in making a weather top from scratch, and I believe he's referencing uh, making uh, walls from foam or something like that that are curved. And I have done that. And if you go to the Evil Castle playlist, back finger there, there's a video that shows me carving the blocks into uh, the foam. And I had round towers and a round wall. So I, I did this um, using the Hotwire Foam Factory's engraving tool.
thank you, Johnny Boy One Nine Seven. Going down here uh, for that uh, great question. And um, if you have questions or comments, please feel free to leave them down below. I do really appreciate every comment that I get. Um, I, I get a lot of support from you guys, and a lot of people were commenting that they were glad to see me come back to the channel. So I really appreciate that a lot. And uh, and if you have questions, I will do my best to answer them in the viewer section like this. Um, if it if it requires more than just a quick two word answer, and I am. Uh, doing a little bit better on staying up with comments, but don't expect an immediate response. I'm unpredictable. All right. Well, with all of that said, uh, one more video in this series. We're going to take a look at all of these things all put together on the board as a whole. So uh, hopefully you will come back and join me for that video because you know that I will be back soon with another Parentscapes video.